firmly conditioned American who's been trained to kill, then to have no memory of having killed. Without memory of his deed, he cannot possibly feel guilt. Nobody, of course, have any reason to fear being caught. His brain has not only been washed, as they say, just been dry clean. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Dan Dix reporting for Press for Truth TV. The use of propaganda along with the manipulation of the education system and the mainstream media has for the longest time been used as effective and practical tools by the elite of the world to control the masses. Throughout history they have been studying the human mind in an effort to not only learn more about what makes us tick, but more importantly how they might become the timekeepers. Shortly after the Second World War, the Canadian government, along with members of the Central Intelligence Agency, engaged in the now infamous Project MKUltra, which specialized in experiments on the human mind in an effort to learn how to gain more control over people. This started in 1949 under Project Bluebird and was later renamed Project Artichoke in 1951. By 1953, the CIA began the creation of MKUltra. Intelligence is nothing really other than information and knowledge. Uh, for the days of Socrates, by various methods, and even before that, uh, mankind has been seeking knowledge of everything that influences his own life or the life of the nation to which he belongs. Uh, but the idea that uh, it is necessarily nefarious, it's always engaged in overthrowing governments, that's false. At no time has the CIA engaged in any political activity or any intelligence activity. It was not approved at the highest level. In order to understand the relevance of these experiments, we must first look back to a time before the Second World War, when during the 1930s, the Russians were conducting trials against enemies of the state. These were referred to as show trials, and many of the people were found guilty of being counter-revolutionaries and were subsequently put to death. Many of these people admitted their own guilt without putting up much of a fight. And so the Americans believed that the Russians had figured out how to manipulate and control political dissidents to their own design. During the Second World War, the Nazis also engaged in their own brainwashing experiments. And following the war, as a part of Operation Paperclip, the U.S. government began smuggling top Nazi scientists out of Germany through the rat line to Rome. Many of these scientists were given U.S. citizenship and went on to work for various facets of the American government, including prominent hospitals and psychiatric wards where the research and experiments continued. The CIA began setting up its own project for the control over people's minds. The project was codenamed MKUltra, and it contained over 150 sub-projects. They experimented with mescaline, scopolamine, and marijuana on unwitting victims. The goal remained the same. As this 1952 CIA memo says, the aim is controlling an individual to the point where he will do our bidding against his will and even against such fundamental laws of nature as self-preservation. Did you ever consider what would have happened if any of these substances were given to, say, unwitting people? I guess I must seem very, very cold-blooded about this, but I don't recall ever having been very much preoccupied with that, uh, with that issue. Tell me about the acid. Oh, I'd rather not. It's, it's a bad trip. It's a bad trip. That was a bad trip. The pain was so excruciating, felt like somebody was sticking me with a million pins. You know, just everywhere. Oh, it just... Many of these MK Ultra experiments included the use of LSD and other drugs on unwitting subjects, as well as the use of controversial psychiatric treatments such as brain implants and electroshock therapy. 
Neurophysicist Dr. Jose Delgado was financed by the Office of Naval Research. In this experiment, the bull is sedated. Electrodes are implanted in its brain. Delgado transmits an electronic impulse to the center of the bull's brain. Delgado has remote control of the animal. Recently released CIA documents refer to the feasibility of remote control of animals and that special investigations will be conducted toward the application of selected elements of these techniques to man. Many of these tests occurred in a small psychiatric institution called the Allen Memorial Institute, which is a part of McGill University in Montreal, Canada. The head of the institute was Dr. Ewan Cameron, a renowned psychiatrist and once the head of both the Canadian Psychiatric Association and the World Psychiatric Association. Cameron's studies were financed by both the CIA and the federal government of Canada to the tune of over half a million dollars. Dr. Cameron's three main brainwashing techniques included electroshock therapy and what he referred to as psychic driving and depatterning. In his use of electric shock methods, the goal was to shock the patient to a state of trauma so that new patterns and memories could be then set in place. These types of trauma-based experiments would cause the patient's mind to compartmentalize a section of the brain in order to deal with the abuse. Cameron believed that it is within the creation of this new compartment that new information can be inserted without the patient having knowledge of it. The psychic driving technique included the use of LSD and other psychedelic drugs combined with a repeating audio message which was delivered directly to the patient. He would give the patient intensive uh, electric treatment in order to make the patient uh, regress deeply, uh, become forgetful, and then he would uh, attempt to implant new ideas. The next step was what he called psychic driving. This involved almost endless tape-recorded messages and more drugs for the patient. Cameron wrote that this was the way to make direct control changes in personality. I was aware of the speaker under my pillow. I was aware of the words. Which were, you killed your mother. You killed your mother. Yeah. Who was alive and well. Who was alive and well. And, uh, over and over again, this voice is uh, Well, like I say, it took, takes about two seconds to say that message. And this was going on for 23 days. Cameron would also put his patients into a comatose state through the use of simultaneous injections of barbiturates and amphetamines to create a lethargic, zombie-like state. Over a period of weeks, the patients would be kept in a coma state. During this time, they became like babies as their minds were wiped clean and new memories and habits could be replaced to fill the void. How long did they put you to sleep for? I was in a, a, a coma for 86 days. 86, 86 days, days of comatose. unbroken sleep. Yeah. Total comatose state. The theory was simple. Erase a disturbed mind and start all over again. One of Dr. Cameron's colleagues at the time was Dr. Peter Roper. The aim, I think, really was to wipe out the patterns of thought and behavior which were detrimental to the patient, which were sick, and replace them with healthy patterns of thought and behavior. These types of CIA experiments that were done at the Allen Memorial Institute in Montreal were done in secret. And in most cases, many of the patients had no idea that they were being used as subjects. In the late 1970s and 1980s, much of this information was being made public through the efforts of journalists such as John Marks and through citizens who were directly affected by the MK Ultra testing. The Canadian government and the CIA were eventually sued for taking part in the illegal experimentation of American and Canadian citizens. Ottawa actually helped suppress a key piece of information, evidence that CIA officials at the U.S. Embassy had actually apologized to the Canadian government when the CIA experiments were first revealed. Jim Turner is still flabbergasted. You've got to understand how important these apologies and expressions of regret were. This is an admission. This is legally admissible in court because it is one of the parties to litigation 
saying, I did something wrong, and I'm sorry I did it. That is prima facie evidence of negligence and of wrongdoing that goes a long, long way to bringing the case to a, a timely conclusion instead of the protracted 10 years of litigation that we had. Although the MK Ultra projects were said to have ceased in 1964, the study of human behavior continues to this day. Some of the information that was learned during the MK Ultra projects are being put in use today by police interrogation and military interrogation tactics at places like Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. One of the most effective tools of brainwashing is the use of repetition, which is the primary function of the mass media in order to manipulate the masses. Remember that knowledge is power. And the more that we know about our own history, the better prepared we can be for our future.